In this video we are going to take a look at creating a layout for a Facebook cover image. So first thing we need to do is click on create new document here in Pixel Creator Pro and we're going to hit clear fields <clears throat> and let's go ahead and type in 850 and we want to switch to pixels okay and by 315. So a Facebook cover image is 850 by 315 and because we're designing for the web we only need to do 72 pixels per inch. Go ahead and click OK. And that is our blank image. Now from here, we can pretty much do whatever we want to do. So I'll show you some of the tools here in Pixel Creator Pro, which is going to allow us to design a little more easily. Now, first of all, I have my rulers visible, so we can turn rulers on and off by hitting Control or Command R for you Mac folks. If we right click on a ruler, we can look at all the different unit values. Now, because we're designing for the web, we want to be most traditionally in pixels. Um, if we were designing for print, we usually use inches. Um, but so we'll be in pixels. So when I click on the guides button here, I want to add a margin around the entire perimeter. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's try, let's see what 25 pixels look like and hit process. And that's about the margin that I was looking for. I think that'll look just fine. So the next thing I want to do here is simply draw out a box. So we're going to go ahead and draw out a box. And this box will represent my first image. Now I have this little color uh, panel down here. And as I hover over, it turns to an eyedropper. And when I click, notice that my foreground color here in Photoshop changes to whatever color I click on. So then I'll choose Add Aperture. And that will simply add a image opening the same size as my selection. Now the next thing I need to do is I'm going to create a series of uh, images directly to the right of this, but I want it to be exactly 25 pixels over. So what I would do is I would click on my guide tool, and when I choose the right, I'm going to choose negative 25. And when I do that, what happens is it will go to the outside of the current layer um, and give me a guideline exactly 25 pixels. So now I'm going to make another selection. And what I want to do is I want to add two images vertically. So this is where Quick Divide comes in. And I'm going to do a vertical division of two with a spacing of 25 pixels. We're not going to divide horizontally. And all we're going to do is create image layers. And when I hit divide, we get two image layers just like that so the next thing again I want to do is I want to have another guideline exactly 25 pixels over so we'll go to guides we'll go to right we'll go to negative 25 and we'll hit process and then for this particular layout we're just going to finish it off with one large image so we'll go ahead and select another image opening here and choose add aperture and there we have our first template for our Facebook cover image and then we can go ahead and save this um, that we could populate with images again and again. So that's the basics of creating a Facebook cover image with Pixel Creator Pro. Okay, so we've seen how we can create a Facebook template, um, a Facebook cover image template pretty easily from scratch. But what if we want to take advantage of some of the pre-designed uh, templates that we offer? This, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our blank page again. And this time what we'll do is we'll just make a selection. And you can see I've just selected a portion of my overall page. And then what we're going to do is come into Adobe Bridge. And this uh, particular template series that I'm going to be choosing layouts from is our Picture Design Volume 2. So let's just begin with our three opening templates. And what is unique about all of our templates is they're all designed to a specific size. So uh, in this case, the Picture Design Volume 2 are all designed as 10 by 10 templates. 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dots per inch, which is most typically what we would use on the print side of things. But because we're developing a layout for the internet, um, then we're not going to be using that large of an image. But what is unique about our templates is that they will automatically scale to whatever size we happen to be working with, even though 
in this case we're working with a very very small uh, comparatively a very very small image so what we're going to do here is just select a template layout that we like so let's say I like a, this grouping of images right here all I would do is simply double click now just a reminder we have a selection made here inside Photoshop so oh, back over in here in bridge when I double click my template what will happen is is that template will open up and uh, automatically uh, be created and then inserted into the layout so you can see and it asks us then if we want to populate with images and for this example I'm gonna say no and then from here we can go in and we can modify so for example I'm just gonna take this image and I'm gonna make it fill a much larger portion of the layout something like that okay and then I'm going to go ahead and grab another selection and let's start over on this side now and I'm going to select like this now the one thing I wanted to point out for this example is if you look this selection is roughly twice as wide as it is tall okay so it's basically a two to one ratio but if you come over to our templates you can see that the templates are a one to one ratio which means that they're exactly um, the same width as they are in height but what's significant about that is it doesn't matter that our template is a one-to-one -one and the selection is a two-to-one because what will happen is if we look at these image openings these will all be stretched to fit into our selection so let's go ahead and choose this layout we'll come back over here to Photoshop that layout is created for us and then inserted into our complete layout here and we'll hit no so you can see that those three images have been stretched slightly to fit in the area that we had selected. And then from here, of course, I could then go in and populate each one of these image layers. I could move them around if I wanted to, for example, change the uh, width of one of them. And maybe I want to duplicate one of the existing layers. So you could do something really simple like that, add a little bit of text. This background image could be a texture, could be an actual image, could be anything. And very easily, by taking advantage of the pre-existing templates, we can create a Facebook cover image uh, using those template collections. And the other thing to keep in mind, too, is that even if we don't own Pixel Creator Pro, we can utilize one of those template collections and automatically populate our images even without uh, using Pixel Creator Pro. So that is uh, something important to keep in mind. You don't have to have Pixel Creator Pro in order to create these layouts and automatically populate the layouts with your images. Certainly Pixel Creator Pro or Easy Album is going to simplify the process for us, but it's not absolutely mandatory. Okay, so one last thing to show you is how to take advantage of the Facebook cover image templates that we have created for you. So here is an example of one template. Um, this is actually the only template that I've converted into a script file for you rather than just a layered PSD file. Um, but the idea here is it shows you how to how to actually utilize this. So once we find the template we like, we are going to create more templates for you, but once you find the template you like, then all we have to do is double click on the corresponding script file. And then over here in whatever version of Photoshop you're using, that template is created. You can see it only takes a second. That template is then created and it asks us if we want to insert images into the layout. Now if you have Pixel Creator Pro or Easy Album, more often than not you're probably going to want to choose no if you don't have one of those plugins then uh, and you want to automatically insert your images then you have to choose yes and that's what we're going to demonstrate so let's go ahead and choose yes what will happen is the first image that to be populated will be turned red and there's a selection around this image and we get the secondary confirmation box do you want to use Briz to select an image? And this is where most people will make the mistake. We do not respond here yet. What we would do is come into Adobe Bridge, browse to a folder of images that we want to use for this particular layout, and then we would select the image that we want to use. And by select, I mean just click on it once to highlight it here in Adobe Bridge. 
and then back over here in Photoshop, then we choose yes. And what will happen is, depending on the number of images we had selected in Bridge, it will automatically be dropped into our layout. So how cool is that? And then it's going to move right on to the next image, if there is one, and give us the dialog box again. Now, over here in Adobe Bridge, we don't have to just pick one image. So for example, we could choose this image and this image. Okay, or we could choose uh, this image and this image and this image. So we'll go ahead and do for this purpose, we'll go ahead and select all three images. So then back over here in Photoshop, we'll hit yes. And what will happen is the first image in Adobe Bridge will be populated into the first image opening. It then pauses, allows us to position it. Then I just simply hit return and it will automatically move on to the next image and the next image opening. And I'll go ahead and hit return. And then, of course, we have our final image and our final image opening. And we can, we'll position it. And there we have our little Facebook layout. So this would be great to send to your high school senior so they could put this up on their Facebook page for their Facebook cover image. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind because we get this question a lot. How do we know what image goes into what opening? Now, when we created this template, we created this image first, then this one. Remember we used that quick divide feature? And then this one. So if you look over here in your layers palette, we have image box one, two, three, and four. Okay, that's how those images are gonna get populated. If we were to select all four images, it gets populated based on the layer name, image box one, then two, then three, then four. Back over here in Adobe Bridge, if you look at the three images that we had selected, we had this one, this one, and this one selected. So that is the order in which they're gonna get populated. So for example, let's say I wanted this image to be inserted first, then this one, then this one. I could just drag and drop the order here in Adobe Bridge and they'll be uh, dropped in in that order. So it's very easy to control um, how the images are inserted once you understand it. Now, I do caution people to not get too excited about it because honestly, it doesn't really matter uh, because here, if you have Easy Album or Pixel Creator Pro, we can select two images and come in here and choose the swap selected image function and it'll just flip flop the two images for us. So it's really not a huge deal if we don't get them in the exact spot we want them. Um, we'll just use that swap image feature and that is both in Pixel Creator Pro and Easy Album to switch those images out very, very easily. Okay, and now let's say, just to finish this off, let's say we want to um, put a background texture in we could uh, simply select, because we're using such a low res image, what we could do is just select our background layer, come in here to Adobe Bridge, and we have to find some backgrounds. So let's find a background here. Let's pick something nice and vibrant and pretty. Um, and what we could do is just drag and drop right here into our layout. And because this is such a low resolution image, it will automatically insert, um, it'll snap to the height of the image, but this image is actually um, 3,000 pixels. So it's a very, very large texture, but it comes in as a smart object when we do the drag and drop thing. And we just go ahead and stretch this baby out um, to fill our template however we want to fill it. And that, you know, that little design element is kind of cool. So whatever you want to do there, um, that's how you can populate. That's one way to do it because we're, we're working with a, such a large texture and such a small image. That's one way to do it. Let's go ahead and delete that show you another way. If you have Easy Album or Pixel Creator Pro, we could just make a selection. See, so I'll just select the entire canvas and when I hit insert photo, it'll just go ahead and take that texture file and automatically resize it to the, to the width of our canvas and then we can go ahead and position it in that way too. So there's a lot of different options that you have. And then finally, just to finish this off, we might want to take all of these image openings and we will give them a five pixel stroke around all of them. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And add just a little white key line around all those images just to kind of finish it off. So that gives you some ideas of how to use Photoshop, 
um, with with the templates if you have pixel creator pro or easy album how those might simplify the process um, but the end result a great result and I think your customers uh, will really like it if you uh, provide those cover images for them on for their Facebook pages thanks for watching